Okay, the last two sections of the review are part one of your fundamental theorem of calculus, which are based on integral defined functions. And these first problems were finding the first derivatives, in other words, find f prime of x for these following integral defined functions. And these are the ones where you can follow that little rule where if it's constant to variable, that variable we plug in to that t, we do not find the antiderivative because the object is to find the derivative of the integrals. So for number 20, f of x, I'm sorry, f prime of x is just going to be 2x minus 7. And then something you always want to be aware of is you plug the x in for the t, but then you always multiply by the derivative of what you plugged in. So I plugged in an x, the derivative of x is 1. For number 20, that ends up not making a difference because you're multiplying by 1, but you always want to be mindful of that because sometimes it does make a difference. Uh, for 21, I notice that my variable is on bottom and my constant is on top. I would prefer it to be the other way around like it was on number 20, constant to variable. So what I'm going to do first with 21 is I'm going to flip the limits of integration. So 5 to x, and then we'll make the integral negative. That's one of those properties of integrals that we talked about. And when I do that, now I can do that little derivative trick where I just plug the x in for the t's, and f prime of x is going to be the negative from outside the integral of 1 over, and I'll plug in x in for the t, x cubed plus 3. And then you always multiply by the derivative of what you plugged in. So I plugged in an x, the derivative of x is 1. There's our answer for number 21. Number 22, we're going to use the same trick. Take that upper limit. It's going from constant to variable. So I'm going to take that upper limit, and I'm going to plug it in for t. Only this time, I'm not plugging in a simple x. I'm plugging in x to the fourth. So for the first time on this section, when I plug in, after I plug in, I'm going to have to multiply by the derivative of x to the fourth. So first, I'll plug x to the fourth in for t. It'll be x to the fourth cubed minus and then there's another t right here, so, I'm gonna, so minus another x to the fourth. And then once you plug in x to the fourth, you take the whole function and multiply by the derivative of what you plugged in, and the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. If you wanted to clean that up, that would be x to the twelfth minus x to the fourth, and then all of that times 4x cubed. And you could do a little bit more simplifying to that, but I'm okay if you stop right there on 22. Uh, moving on to 19, pi is a constant, so 19 is going from constant to variable. It's just the variable on top is a little bit ugly. The sine x is going to replace the t's in the integrand there. So f prime of x is going to be the secant cubed of sine x but then you have to remember to multiply that whole thing by the derivative of what you plugged in. So times the derivative of sine, which is cosine x. So there's your answer for 19. Um, 20 brings in another little trick. This one is going from variable to variable, so you don't have the option easily of making it constant to variable. It could be done, but the quicker way is to remember that if you're going from variable to variable, you're going to follow the same derivative approach. We're going to plug in the x's, only we're going to subtract the 2 when we plug it in. We're going to start by plugging in x cubed for the t's. And so it's going to be x cubed, square root, cosine of x cubed. And then you multiply by the derivative of what you plugged in. So I'm going to multiply by 3x squared. So I plugged in the top. Then minus, and now we repeat the whole process, only we plug in the bottom one. So now I'm going to plug in x, and so it will be x, square root, cosine x. And just get in the habit, always multiply by the derivative of what you plugged in. And the derivative of what I plugged in for x is 1, and that would be your final answer. So you plug in the top, x cubed, get that piece, plug in the bottom x, get that piece, don't forget to multiply by the derivatives of what you substituted, and you subtract. Uh, 21 is kind of a tricky one because this one's going from constant to constant. There are no variables in this one. So if f of x equals this, you could follow the rule and say for 21, now I'll write it down here. 21, your derivative 
we're going to plug in the 5, so it will be the natural log of 5 squared plus 1. But remember, you always multiply by the derivative of what you plugged in. I plugged in a 5, and the derivative of 5 is 0. Then minus, I'll plug in the 1. The natural log of 1 squared plus 1, but then we multiply by the derivative of what I plugged in. I plugged in a 1, the derivative of that is 0, and I end up with something times 0 minus something times 0, which gives me a final answer of just 0 for 21. So kind of a sneaky problem there. And then the last two have multiple parts. 22 is the easier of the two. Uh, part A simply asks you to find f of 2. Notice it does not say f prime of 2. f prime of 2 is part B. The first is just straight up f. And Algebra 1 taught you that if you have a function f of x and you want f of 2, you plug 2 in for all of the x's. So it's going to be the integral from 2 to 2 of the function 1 over the square root of t cubed plus 1. And it does not matter what the function is. If you're computing area from 2 to 2, you are not going anywhere. That area is 0. You are accumulating nothing by not moving anywhere. Part B, now it asks for f prime of 2, but if you've ever needed to evaluate a derivative, you've had to find the derivative first. So we're going to find f prime of x, which is exactly what we were just doing on that last section. We're going to plug the x in for the t. So 1 over the square root of x cubed plus 1 times the derivative of what you plugged in. So I plugged in x, and the derivative of x is 1, and then f prime of 2 would be 1 over the square root of 2 cubed, which is 8, plus 1 times 1, which ends up simplifying to 1 third. So there's your value for f prime of 2. And then part c, ask for the equation of a line tangent. And we've been doing that all year. Every single time, we've needed a point and a slope. The point is always has always been f of your x coordinate, so f of 2. Well, that's our answer to part a. f of 2 was 0, so my point is 2, 0. My slope is found by the derivative. We plug 2 into the derivative, which is what we did in part b. So my slope is 1 third. And then once you have your point and your slope, slap in point slope form. y minus 0 is 1 third, x minus 2. And there's your answer for part C. So um, I could have only asked for part B. I didn't have to ask for f of 2 and f prime of 2 because part C, where I asked for the tangent, I think I said part B a minute ago. Anyway, if I had only asked for the equation of the tangent, you should have known that you're going to need f of 2 and f prime of 2. I just happened to have walked you through the process a little bit there to help you out in the end. And then number 23 is kind of similar. 23. First, it says find g of 4. Okay, that's not g prime. We're not going to do that derivative trick where we plug in the x. It's straight up g. And so for part a, g of 4, we're going to plug 4 in for all the x's. So instead of 1 to x, it's going to be 1 to 4 of t, t squared minus 1. And this time, unlike number 22, where we were going from 2 to 2, we weren't going anywhere. This time I actually am. I'm going from 1 to 4 which means I need to figure out how I'm going to get this answer. And we get this, we evaluate this by doing the antiderivative. And before I do the antiderivative, I want to distribute the t. So t times t squared would be t cubed. t times 1 is t. Then we'll do the antiderivative, t to the fourth over 4, minus t to the squared over 2 from 1 to 4. And then we'll evaluate that. So 4 to the 4th divided by 4 minus 4 squared divided by 2 minus, plug in 1, 1 to the 4th over 4 minus 1 squared over 2. And we'll clean that up. And we get 56.25 or 22, 225 over 4, and I cheated. I used the calculator. Didn't feel like doing the arithmetic. Um, part B, find g prime of x. Okay, now it is asking for the derivative, so this time, in part B, we can use that little trick. We're going to plug the x in for the t's. So g prime of x is going to be x times x squared minus 1. And then we always need to be mindful of multiplying by the derivative of what you plugged in. I plugged in an x. The derivative of x is 1. The bottom limit is a constant, so I don't need to worry about that. 
and that's all there is to part b if the answer is just x x squared minus one and then the last one find the intervals on which g is increasing a function increases and anytime you see anything about increasing in calculus you should immediately think the derivative needs to be positive and that's going to be our approach here but before I find out where the derivative is positive I'm going to find out when the derivative is equal to zero so I'm going to take my derivative x squared minus one factors to x plus one x minus one I'm going to start by setting that equal to zero and finding the critical numbers that's going to equal zero at x equals 0, negative 1, and 1. And then if I want to know when the derivative is positive, then we do a little sign analysis, plotting my critical numbers on my number line. And then I need to test each of these intervals because I want to see which interval is going to give me a positive derivative. And so let me do that really quick. There we go. So I tested all my intervals, and I found that the signs are negative, positive, negative, positive as we work our way through those critical numbers. And we are looking for where the function g is increasing, which is when the derivative is positive, which is between negative 1 and 0, and everywhere after 1. And so that means that g increases. Therefore, g increases on the intervals, negative 1 to 0, and then again from 1 all the way to infinity. And there's our final answer. We're done.